Hey mamas, welcome back to The Balanced Mom. Today is day 15 of our 25 Days of Christmas series. We are continuing our series today with another video about non-toy gift ideas and today we're talking about one of my favorites, which is board games. Anyone who knows me knows I am obsessed with these, so we have so many board games in our house. But we don't want this list to be super long, so we will do another video on that later. And today we're just going to be talking about our favorite board games for kids. So here are some of the popular ones that many people know, and we don't want to spend too much time talking about them, but we just want to bring them to your attention in case you're not familiar with them. Otherwise, we're going to focus on the more unique ones that we've been playing a lot lately and have really enjoyed. So my kids are a little bit younger, so I will talk about the games that are more geared towards little ones, because mine are three and four, and Andrew will talk about the older kids later. Our absolute favorite right now, my kids can't get enough of it, is Sleeping Queens. So this is a really cute game. There's really cute art on the cards. It's really, really easy and simple to learn. There are 12 sleeping queens and the point of the game is to wake up all of the queens. The person at the end who has woken up more queens and has them in their hand is the winner. And there's other cute things thrown in there like there's a knight that can steal other people's queens or there's a sleeping potion where you can put other queens to sleep. And it's just a really fun game that the younger ones and the adults can enjoy too. And my kids actually played it at your house and they actually wanted us to get it also. Another household favorite of ours is called Super Tooth. This would be a really good game if you have a child who really likes dinosaurs. So the whole point of this game is to collect these tooths. Tooths. <laughs> So the whole point of this game is to collect three of these teeth. The first person to collect three teeth wins. And you do that by making matches of the dinosaurs with either three or more cards. There are plant eater dinosaurs, which are the green cards. Sometimes a meat eater card will show up on the table and you have to feed it. So you have to find a matching plant eating dinosaur. Or you can also have a triceratops and this can defeat that dinosaur. If you cannot feed the dinosaur or defeat it, then it wipes out your whole board and you have to start all over again with new cards. There are also a couple different event cards and so one of them is this asteroid and so when this comes out, you have to take all of the cards off the board and you put them back in the box and they're out of play for the entire game. I do like to keep the rule book out so I know what each of the event cards does because there's quite a few of them, but generally once you get the gist of the game, it's really easy to play and to follow along. Along with Sleeping Queens and Super Tooth, which are both by Game Right, another Game Right game is called Outfoxed. And this one is a little bit different than the other ones because it is a co-op game, which means the family is working together to catch the culprit. It's kind of like a clue where you're trying to figure out who is a thief and who stole something from somebody else. And it's really fun. Our kids really love it. It's really good if you're looking for something a little bit different. Another family favorite of ours for young children and adults alike is a game called <laughs> Suspend. And this is a really fun balancing game. So you have a dice, there's different colors on it, and you have sticks that match those colors. And so you have to roll a specific color. So for example, if Andrea got red, she would have to balance the red stick onto this pole here. And it gets harder as you go because you have different shapes with different notches. So when you put it on there, obviously it makes it go down. And so for kids, if you have really young ones, this could be challenging. So there's another version of this called Suspend Junior. And I haven't tried that one. I'm gonna try to do this with my three and four year old and then maybe I'll splurge on Suspend Junior if this is still a little too advanced for them. And if it's too easy for you, what we like to do is we blindfold ourselves and we have one person who's directing the other one who's blindfolded and they'll say, okay, move it a little bit up move it a little bit to the right. And so the one person who's blindfolded has to try to get it on the board without knocking it over. It's not working. <laughs> so this is a really fun game for a couple's date night or just to play with your kids. I have a quick question. Can you hold it as you put it or no? no? So no, it's one-handed. It. Yes. Oh, well that's hard. Yes, it is. And it gets harder as you go because obviously there's less places to put it that would be safe. Another more popular game is Bananagrams. I won't explain that since you probably know what it is, but this one is my first Bananagrams. And I use this to teach my daughter well, and my son how to spell their names. And we just use it in homeschool a lot. Instead of having individual letter tiles, it has combinations to make it a little bit easier for the young ones to make their own words. Another favorite in our house is a game called Zingo. It's basically a really fun version of Bingo and it's really easy to learn. There are multiple versions of this. There is the general Zingo, number Zingo, sight word Zingo. So you can also use it as an educational game in your homeschool and it's fun for the kids. Another really good game brand for kids is called Haba. They produce a bunch of different games. I don't have them here, but our favorites are probably Valley of the Vikings and Animal Upon Animal. The Haba games are really good for younger kids. 
The last board game brand I want to mention is Peaceable Kingdom. This again is really good for the younger kids. I think all of their games are cooperative and so they're a little bit more basic. They're not as fun for the adults, but they're really easy for the young kids to catch on to. So let's talk about headbands. There are several versions out there and I ended up having three from the thrift store, um, but I like that one of them actually has pictures on it with the word. The goal is basically wear a headband, there's a card and everybody else has to give you hints on it. So you can ask questions and you're basically trying to figure out what is on your forehead. So the nice thing is if your child still can't read, they can look at the picture and they could actually figure out what they're trying to describe. But there's also the older version where it's just the word. So it just depends on how old your kids are. I like to mix mine up and so I take out the younger one for our five-year-old and then I use the other cards for our older kids. That way we have more words to work with. I've actually never played this game until I found it at the thrift store. You're gonna notice a lot of price tags on my games. They're always from the thrift store. But this is basically a four in a row game. You basically pick cards and you're trying to get your tokens to be four in a row. So it's kind of like tic-tac-toe but with animals and it's four instead of three. If you want to use this for homeschool, there is a version out there called Sequence Letters. And so basically you have to match a animal, for example, with the letter sound that's on the board. So you could have a card that says zebra and you have to match it with the Z on the board. It's a really good way to reinforce letter sounds. Everyone knows the game Monopoly. However, some of us don't have the attention span to sit there for one or two hours playing the game. So I was a little hesitant when I found the junior version at the store, but I ended up buying it because again, it's always $2 or less. And so my my kids really, really like it. I do have to say that the amount of money that they get, I mean, we're working with really small numbers here. So the game could actually be pretty quick and it's really, really similar to the regular Monopoly, but on a smaller scale. And it's a really good way for your kids to work on their math. So maybe it's the age of our kids, but our kids love competing with us. And so here are the games that we absolutely love when it comes to us as parents competing against the kids. Beat the Parents is one where it's just a board game and you're trying as a parent to go across the board as the kids are trying to come across the board to get to the other side. So you're kind of going in opposite directions, just asking each other questions, like taking turns. You get up to three questions around and as soon as you get it wrong, it's the other team's turn. But our kids love it and it's funny because the adult questions I barely know them. I think it's because it's based on the American culture and since I wasn't born here, I have no clue what they're asking versus the kids one they actually do a decent job at. But thank God my husband's on my team because we usually win because he knows them. Another one that's super competitive is are you smarter than a fifth grader? It's still based on questions, but it's just different. It's always the way it's laid out that makes it unique. So obviously asking questions gets kind of repetitive and boring, but the cool thing is it's kind of like decoded in it. So there's like a little reader for you to actually be able to look at what the answer is. So notice you can't actually read what it says, but it makes it fun because it feels like, like you're a secret spy asking a question. But once you slip it into the sleeve, this little red window makes you able to actually read what the card says. And there's questions for first to fifth graders, so it's really nice because if you feel like your child is really struggling with a subject, you can stay away from that subject if you want them to really enjoy the game and just choose ones where they could actually answer. And just like the show, you get to peek, copy, or save somebody's answer. So it's super sweet. It's basically just like the TV show, and it was cool to introduce it to the kids because they get to watch an episode of it before we actually played it. Now here's another game, but it's a two-person game. It's called Stratego, and it's basically all about strategizing. It's kind of like a capture the flag on board, and so each person has a flag, and you get to hide it wherever you want, and the goal is to move up with your pieces and capture the whole other battlefield. My kids really like that game. However, because it's a two-person game, I always feel like it kind of separates us as a family. So I like games that include the whole family for our family night. So any of these games would be an amazing addition to gift to your children. Since we do game nights throughout the year, I feel like this is the gift that we're gonna get the most use out of. If there's any other games that we missed that you'd like to play with your family, please drop them down in the comments below. I'm constantly looking for new games to play with the kids. Mind you, her closet is completely filled with games, but that's for another yes. video. I'm slightly addicted. <laughs> and don't forget to hit the like button, y'all. We really appreciate your support and hit the subscribe button for our daily videos.